So um, why don't we begin? And then I think we're going to move into a little bit of a chat, and then we'll go into what I call an amuse bouche, a little appetizer of a crush, because we don't have that much time. Um, so I'm excited. Um, so if all of you, you're all used to sort of <sighs> taking that deep breath. So why don't we take a deep breath in and out. And just center and in again. And breathe out. Why don't you gently close your eyes? And what I do is I imagine all of the ideas and voices and energy and emotion in my head as little bright lights little bits of energy. So what you want to be able to see are all the little bouncing bits of ideas and energy and excitement and sadness and everything that's in your head. Just close your eyes and imagine them as little bright lights bouncing around. See all of them, capture them. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine them all at once pouring out of your head as a stream of light. Now just push them all out because we just don't need them. We do not need them for the next 50 minutes. That's it. They will be back. You will be able to capture them. You won't forget anything. Just let it pour out of your head. Sometimes I see them as colored streams, depending on my mood. But just imagine it's just streams of steam pouring out. What I want you to now focus on is that beautiful space that you've left behind. Just a calm sanctuary of space. If you have little bits of light bouncing in your brain, push them out, just kind of clear it all out, sweep, 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 sweep them out. Now we're gonna take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And slowly open your eyes. And we've got a little bit of space for crushing now. Thanks, Janice. That was lovely. Um, so let's let's just start at the top. Um, who are you, Janice? <laughs> How did you arrive at this work? Seriously, who are you and how did you arrive at this work? Um, it's so fun because uh, at MEA, um, I went through the journey of shedding, right? So um, before MEA, my first instinct is, let me tell you about the work that I've done. Um, so it's sort of like, how do I peel back and figure out who am I? Um, so I'm the product of a very uh, eclectic background. Um, I was brought up uh, in a military household. My dad was a military officer and uh, brought up with samurai culture, so no structure there at all. Uh, <laughs> moving around a lot. Um, and Did you say samurai culture? Samurai culture, yeah. Along real, with the like military Bushido officer. Kind of thing? <laughs> Dude, I know how to like make a bed and bounce a quarter off of it, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I was given the grace of uh, coming from a family of very eccentric oldsters. So the goal for me throughout my entire life was actually hitting 55. So even when I was young, I was thinking, okay, like, and one day I'll be baked at 55, which is hilarious, right? Um, I also come from a group of people who, um, the women especially, um, are just are really gritty. And they enjoy doing things that are uh, not very traditional. And so throughout my entire life, what I've been is a mix of um, a pattern finder, um, someone who has been forced by circumstance to be very agile. Um, so I was picked up and moved 13 times. I lived in four different uh, continents, um, was traveling throughout my entire life, 
went to school in five different states in the United States, ranging from California to Alabama, um, traveled across the country. Uh, you know, I don't know, at least I can uh, talk about this to most of you, uh, traveling, uh, sleeping on the bottom of a car, you know, how everyone would take a part of the car and we'd all sleep in different parts and drive across the country. Um, and so I was able to experience Southeast Asia and Europe and the United States and traveling around the world. Um, and it gave me a sense of perspective on ourselves as uh, in our lovely uh, American culture on the military bases that I lived in, as well as being immersed in a variety of cultures um, that were different than the one I was brought up in. Uh, you said, so, oh, go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so with, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> you said that some of the women in your life are pretty gritty, uh, some of the older women. Tell us about the bodybuilder. <laughs> my aunt. Uh, yeah, so um, one, of the, one of the women inspirations in my life is 90 years old. Uh, actually, she's 91 now. And she began weightlifting um, at 80. Um, she was starting to get really um, sort of in, you know, um, fading a little bit. And um, my nieces uh, decided they were going to start taking uh, their aunt to uh, their grandma, actually, um, to weightlifting and bodybuilding with them at Gold's Gym in Hawaii, which it doesn't get more real than that. Big Hawaiian guys like, you know, weightlifting. So um, they started to work with uh, Nana. And uh, Nana was super gritty and just showed up every day. And uh, fast forward to uh, her 90th birthday where she, is, uh, she was competing and won in her weight class. Um, and she has guns like I can't even express. Like I've shown pictures of her and she's beautiful arms. <laughs> it's just like, um, and she shows up in her little singlet, tiny little, you know, Asian lady who can straight live. 60 pounds, which I actually don't think I could do. Um, and she's 91. And so um, I also have a mother who started Bikram yoga at uh, 60 and became a certified yoga instructor at 70. You know, so they, they're these women who take that 10 year decade trajectory and basically say, it might take me a little bit longer to get there, but I'm just gonna show up every day for 10 years. Um, and so that's really the purview that I bring um, to everything that I do. And, and did it really impact your way of thinking about how people can surmount their blocks? A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. And, and um, I think also I have a family who um, does things that uh, don't, um, that defy uh, rules that we have and we're we're structured with. Um, I tell a story about my brother. My brother speaks eight languages. He reads and writes and translates between them. I had a perception that he got all the DNA for language and I was very jealous for many years. And uh, he overheard me talking about this and he said, uh, yeah, no, I actually am really bad at languages. And I was like, okay, I barely speak one, you speak eight, how can you be bad at them? And what he said was, well, I actually just really care about it. So I work really hard at it. So that can, that can actually shatter my entire perception of self, or I can say, okay, um, what that indicates to me is, right? Um, there is nothing that we can't do if we don't just, you know, and this is really based on the idea of grit. Uh, I love Angela Duxworth's book. I've just discovered it about grit, which is the idea of we won't be great at it. We won't be great at it for a long time, but if we really care about it, we might just master it. And so that's really what we're seeing is in my life, the example of, and I will tell this story because it's really important with my mother. So my mother took 10 years to get certified in Bikram. Um, through that, she hospiced two of my relatives. She had breast cancer. She had, you know, death in the family. She moved people. That's why it took her 10 years. But what she did was she always made her yoga practice a priority. 
And that wasn't without resentment, right? So there are people who are like, oh my gosh, she's doing yoga again, right? But that was her way of caring for herself so she could care through that process of 10 years. And so that's really the, the practice of this idea of crushing is just tiny little care that we care for our, our internal life as much as we do for our external life. So all of these things add up um, and, and, and make you realize that this is something you might want to do. What is it? Can you, can you tell us a bit about the company? Can you tell us a bit about your journey to get there as well? Um, yes. So um, I'm, uh, my career was uh, started in advertising. So um, here's another juxtaposition. Um, I went to a Jesuit school. Um, so I was trained in, uh, by the holy and the unholy, which was Mad Men. <laughs> so I went through an advertising program, right? So I have the holy and the unholy at the same time. Um, and my entire career has been about new media and advertising. So I started in traditional advertising and then had the gift of being at the very beginning of digital media and marketing, um, helping uh, build the industry in a really bizarre way and um, got to help many, many companies move from what we call bricks and mortar and traditional into digital. Um, I, through that, I developed a practice um, that I used to help companies do that. It was a methodology and it's uh, based on traditional branding, um, but I kind of made it uh, sort of shorter and faster. Um, one of my clients who was a 30 something millennial asked me to develop something for her based on that practice. Um, kicking and screaming, which I do a lot with Jeff. Um, I ended up creating um, a, a workshop. And because I am a product designer and a system designer, I began to pull it apart because I, I saw that that original process was causing a lot of anxiety and stress in the people who were moving through it. Um, their approach and their attitude and their uncomfort, their discomfort with sort of checking inside was really evident. And so I wanted to pull it apart and figure out how to not have that happen. So I worked with a cognitive scientist and an amazing group of coaches and counselors and just guides who helped me sort of figure out how to put it together as a method. Um, so now it's a methodology um, that is called a rapid reset methodology. It works with um, the frontal part of your brain. So we're going to do a little play with that. Um, the, your rational and your inner critic. And it sort of helps you see that, but it also helps you sort of tap into your um, authentic intelligence. And so out of that, we're now able to create lots of different styles of workshops. So some of you were able to participate in one that was woven throughout um, the MEA week. We also do one that's three hours condensed. We do one that's two hours condensed and we've just created one that is an hour. And that is specifically for the times that we're in. Yeah. And that's, uh, sorry, and that's a company called Bright Catalyst and we offer crushes through it. Thank you. Cool. You talk about um, authentic and telling in using different types of brain science. It seems to revolve a lot around time and, and the use of time and time and under pressure. Can you just, before we go into this, this sort of crush sequence, yeah. why, why, why do you ask people to work so quickly? Why, why do you ask people to sort of work in terms of time and pressure? Um, so the more I discover about brains, and um, so I have a lovely uh, doctor who I ask questions and he tells me things and I go, no, right? So one of the more interesting things um, is that um, our authentic intelligence is really, you know, and this has been understood, uh, our authentic self is really just our knowing. Um, what happens is our brain sort of pings back to double check with our uh, front, frontal lobe, which is our critic and our rational. Does this follow our rules? Is this really true, right? Sometimes those rules get outdated, 
Mm. But they're still sort of sitting on you and they're sort of, and we'll talk a little bit about this through the crush. Um, and so what the, what the technique that we use is, is we basically say, just like when you do speed tests, you've got three minutes. So here's what your brain does. Your authentic intelligence goes, get out of the way. I do not need logic. I do not need rational. I am stepping up because I know what the right answer is. So that's why we do this because we're trying to show you where you're getting, where all of the guides are that are stopping you that are no longer fitting with what your true compass is. And so we call it rapid reset because we're actually teaching you what it feels like and how to remember how this feels and then what the difference is between the guides. And this is a little bit about um, the pieces of paper that we use and all of this is just a little taste to go like, oh, okay. Because when I tried meditation, I had a really hard time, like mm -hmm. a really hard time understanding the difference between oh, these are actually a different part of my brain. This is not my true self. And so this technique is also helping me like, you know, as an artist, like I need, I have a particular technique to sketch. That's really what this is all about. Cool. So we're going to hand over the screen to you and we're not going to work through our hour in the way we traditionally do, correct? You're going to, you're going to step us through a sequence of exercises where they're going to come back together as a group have a discussion around it. And then if people want to break out at the back end of the hour, they can do that and go into groups just to discuss it or not, correct? Yes. And so um, I'm gonna, this is gonna, I hope it doesn't feel fast. It is fairly fast. This is traditionally, um, just imagine this, this is a much more expanded piece. So um, when I say amuse bouche, we're just giving everyone a tiny little taste of um, what the crush feels like. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to begin to uh, tap a little bit and see a little bit. So let's see if this works. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, thumbs up, no? yeah. yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a little play. Just hold your pieces of paper and pen to the side. You don't need them yet. Um, and uh, you, will, you will need uh, the books, but um, I'll actually show you and you can probably sketch if you don't have a printer. So don't worry about any of that. I just started with this because um, I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> Um, when we're when we're in times of challenge, we tend to, you know, um, I lived in England, went to high school in England, and it was all about the stiff upper lip, right? And, uh, you know, when we're in times of challenge, uh, sometimes it's important to smile. And so uh, just remember that as we're, you know, uh, having those moments where we're trying to grit through. Um, this is about lightness. This is about lightness and uh, joy. Um, I love this uh, discovery, which was two psychologists um, in the 70s, uh, basically mapped um, the stages that our brain goes through when we are going through a change cycle. So it's that immobilization, which is like, oh my God, I'm stuck, right? We've all had that, you know, analysis paralysis, and it's not that bad, and oh my God, it's really bad. And then it's like, okay, okay, I can do something. What are you doing, right? We go up and we test and we ask. Why is this happening? And finally, okay, it's happened. Now I'm going to go forward. What is extraordinary about times of stress and challenge is that we're going through this sometimes multiple times a day, right? So we've got inbound information coming in and it's kind of like, what? But wait, there's more. And so this normal cycle that might take months or you know, years of unfolding is basically happening in rapid cycle to us right now. So what is most important when we think about this and we think about self-care is also regularly thinking about caring for our internal self. So how do we do this? Four steps, remember this is based on standard business. Anytime you are going through a project or wanting to get anything done, you will follow these steps, whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously. So it's checking in, where am I today? It's focusing, where do I wanna go? It's clearing your mojo, which is like, 
what am I doing today and what do I need to keep doing and what can I stop doing? And then finally, it's doing a plan. We are not going to go through all of this today, but this is just the steps that, you know, you, you are going to take whether it's purposeful or not purposeful. So what's a block? So a block is actually a friendly guide that is there. So we, our, our brain creates, just like a computer program, a guide set. They're called neural pathways, and they're basically rules. And that rule is based on a set of intelligence, information, experience. Um, I don't know. I, I just read Chip's, uh, one of Chip's missives, and it really talked about this, right? So in the Boy Scouts, you always have to know. You always have to be prepared, right? So now that is a guide set that you have. And it is a helpful guide until it's not. And then it becomes a block. So that's what a block is. It could have been helpful at one time, but now it is no longer helpful and it is stopping us, right? And so what happens with our brain is, you got a couple of these, it's okay, no worries, I can manage this. We've all told ourselves these stories until it is not helpful. And now my brain is so full, I can't see the vista of where I'm going keeping it all in our heads, right? I can manage this. By the way, this is something we learn it when we are youthful. I can just keep it all in my head. And so um, the reality is no, uh, you know, it does fill up. So how do we call regularly? How do we audit regularly? And treat these as play as opposed to something to be feared, fearful of. So how are we going to get familiar with this? I use Post-its. What we're going to do today is, again, really little taste. We're going to do a couple sprints. So what you're going to do is every time a thought pops up that stops you from writing something down in these sprints, you're going to write it down on a piece of paper and you're going to put it to the side. Now remember, each of these guides was set in place as a loving thing. This is very primal. The rule set was adopted in our brain to keep your physical body alive. That is it. So your brain has a guide set that says, are we afraid of this or are we excited by this? This is prime. The prime rule set is, here's a rule, are we excited or are we afraid? And then a series of networks of decisions go off. Over the years, and this is the thing that got me so like, what? When Dr. Chuck told me this is, over the years, those get obscured, just like with a computer, right? So you add in more programming. So lots of branches really obscure the original rule set. We, it's hard to know what that rule set is. So that's what we're going to play with today. It's hard to find them unless we're challenging them. So you're going to go through a series of exercises. And every time a thought pops up, good or bad, we're not judging, not judging. You're going to write it down. And you're just going to keep writing. I've had seen people with upwards of 80 of these at the end of this. Right? Those are just like a lot of ideas. And by the way, a lot of them are the same message. So that's what's filling, remember, filled, 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 that's what's filling and keeping your brain occupied. Okay, so we're gonna jump to the first sprint. Remember, this is fun, this is fun. <laughs> and I'm gonna time you. What's gonna happen is you're gonna take three minutes, you really don't need that much time. You're gonna write a number in, in the circle. In the tiny little circle, you're gonna write a number from one to five. One being least satisfied, five being most satisfied. Do not overthink this. Boom, 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 you're gonna work your way around. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna write in the square one thing and one thing only. That might bump that number up to a higher level of satisfaction. As you're doing this, other ideas are gonna pop up that are gonna stop you, judge you, write it down on the post-it and just say, thank you, I don't need you right now. 
Okay, starting now, you got three minutes. One thing to know is I am not going to ask you questions about this. You will not be sharing it. This is your personal work, your personal archive. Just pop into what you know, your wisdom. You're halfway there. You have 30 seconds. And we're done. So what's important to remember as you do this is there's no right or wrong. Um, this is play. This is play. What you're doing is you're gathering information. And remember that cycle that we go through, that change cycle. This is going to change. Some days it's going to be, you know, all five. Some days it's going to be all ones. It's just important data to get out of your head, right? It's all we're doing is clearing space for the things we want to spend more time on. What's next? What do we want to fill our brain with is um, a focus. You know, how are we going to, going to determine our reality? Um, this is actually for any Star Wars fans. <laughs> this is actually a Jedi wisdom. Um, which is really whatever we're filling our brain with is going to be what we view as our reality. Now, it's interesting that I've discovered as oftentimes, and you all recognize this if you've gone through um, an MEA cohort, is this, this force ranking. And I remember the first time I was there, we just did a brainstorm on all the things. And I said, well, we have to force rank them. And we had this hilarious conversation about force ranking. So here's what I've discovered about force ranking. What this tells us unconsciously, and I've discovered this over you know, the hundreds of people who've gone through is oftentimes our internal prioritization has shifted before our conscious decision-making has shifted, our actual behavior. 
So we might be behaving according to an outdated priority set. And that's where we find tension and dissatisfaction. So the exercise here is you're going to brainstorm a series of things that are important to you right now. We're just talking about right now. And then what you're going to do is, and you're going to write some down. And then what you're going to do is force rank them. So this is a two part exercise. We're going to have two minutes brainstorming, two minutes force ranking just for today. So you're going to start here. Just think about all the things that are important to you that you believe that you prioritize and then start to force rank. Two minutes on one, two minutes on the other. I'll give you the change point. Again, write down every time there's a judgment on yourself on a post-it. Put it to the side. Keep moving. Okay? Starting now, you have two, first two minutes. You can be brainstorming. What are things that are important to you right now? So remember, we're sketching, we're sketching, start to move over to force rank if you haven't already. And remember to use your post-its, pay attention to what you're telling yourself. Last minute, look back and forth, just And if you're finished, just pay attention to the ideas, thoughts, emotions, write them down on your post-it, just pay attention. 
What is this generating? And we're done. Let's move to the next sprint. I know it's fun. Speed, speed brain stuff. <laughs> Squeezing our brains, giving it a workout. Um, so uh, part of the work that I do that's so interesting is, um, and it's hard, is I'm working with groups that are doing layoffs and uh, big transitions for their organizations. And one of the things um, that uh, leaders are coming back to me and saying is, my team is starting to like act frantic. You know, they're starting to do this hyperactivity and I don't know what to do with, you know, how do I, how do I tell them that it's okay to ease off? I found this super interesting because we're all doing this at some point. Like, oh my gosh, someone's doing that thing. I should be writing a novel creating a masterpiece, you know? And so whenever stress rises in our brain, we move into autopilot and we, we believe that doing more of the same thing we've always done harder is gonna help us, right? It's sort of a mix between comfort and action. I need to do something and I'm gonna do that harder as opposed to taking our foot off the gas, which feels really uncomfortable when things are happening to us and just pausing and sort of saying, what's happening and what is my change state? What is the state that I'm in? What is change from how I've always behaved? What used to be the norm and what is now important to me and what I want to focus on? So this last sprint is about being more aware of that. Um, I use this technique whenever I'm cleaning my cupboards, my closets, anything. Um, someone called this, I don't know if any of you know who Marie Kondo is, but she sort of loves her objects and decides what, what stays or what goes. This is really a way of sort of sorting through things and thinking about what you need to keep because um, they're essential, what you should figure out if you should get rid of, um, we have a lot of things that we really don't need but are there for comfort. What about things that maybe are not so good for us but just make us happy and then what's on our list? So this has been tuned a little bit for where we are today, right? So I hear a lot of people saying, I'm taking a lot of naps. I'm like, I think your brain probably needs that. It just, you know, that's essential for you right now. So what we're gonna do is this is uh, two sprints. Again, two minutes, we're gonna, we're doing a muse bush. Normally you get a little more time. We're just gonna squeeze our brains a little bit. Sprint forward and just write down everything that we're doing. And this is physical, mental, and emotional. And then what you're gonna do is sort it into buckets. You got three minutes for that and you got three minutes for the next one, which you can leap to, which is what you'd like to do more what you'd like to do more. So let's start. Some of you have already started. Go for it, three minutes. I've had people ask, loading dishwasher, yes. Walking the dog, yes. Binge watching, yes. All of those things, write it down because those that's where you're putting your energy. Every place you're putting your energy. And Janice, are we doing these on the papers to sort or on a list? Like you're doing it on your list. Okay. You're doing it on uh, if you you can um, sketch this out or you can uh, if you have a printed book, great. And then on your post its, if you hear judgment, if you hear friction from writing something down, write it on your post it. A question yeah the mojo yeah. what was the o must must keep oh no just makes me happy um on my list on my list sorry and that's the next that's the next oh, one okay. okay great thank you
Whenever you're ready, you can start to move over to places you want to spend more time. So the second sheet. Now, if you have a chance, you can go back and forth between the two. And now we're at time. So there is no finish here. Remember, this is an evolving, ongoing, not stress. We're playing. This is a really, it's a technique. It's a technique to just start to look and pull out and play with whatever's in our head. Just begin to master it and understand the reason why little bits of paper is that they're ephemeral, just like what's in our head. We give so much weight to an idea. We have so much prominence and build around and cause ourselves pain around something that is really as, you know, insignificant as a little piece of paper. So what you've done is you now brought out all of these things that are in your head. We are not going to do this exercise because we don't have enough time, but there's a series of other things that we do in the crush. And one of them is beginning to look for patterns. 
Because remember, we have certain guide sets that are centered around patterns. So these are examples of sort of messaging patterns that we picked up. Messaging patterns that we picked up, right? I'm too shy. I'm extroverted. I'm going crazy, right? I have to take care of, we just have these patterns. And so those guides and those messages are gonna pop up a lot. Like, oh, watch out, right? So that's a fear. So then the question is, when we look at these, how can we reframe all of those messages? So people, when they look at crush or block, think that crush is like Thor crush. Like, oh, crushing, I need to do crushing. And actually, it is the opposite. So the crush is love. Crush is saying, these messages are not here to harm me. These messages were adopted and put into place to keep my body alive somewhere in my lifetime, somewhere in the generations of history. There was a wisdom that said, this is what we do to keep us safe. So the wonderful part about this is, you can think it and say, you've done your job. I learned this lesson when I was in third grade in my case. I'm now in my fifties and I actually don't need that lesson right now. So thank you but you're starting to get in the way, you're starting to stop our progress. So that's a, that's a really important thing, is what happens when we form aggression against anything, right? When we fight it. I've got all these messages. It's like, you know, filling my brain. I'm feeling, so I'm gonna fight it. What if we just said, thank you? I get that you're there to actually keep me safe, but I don't need you right now. So that's really the crush. That is the crush. That's the intention of the crush is really saying, can we bring more acceptance? Can we bring more forgiveness? Can we bring more release by love as opposed to aggression and trying to dominate? Because what does our brain do? It tries to defend itself. Okay, so we're gonna end with a nice little four count. <sighs> that was a really hard sprint. Even I'm sort of like, wow, that was really intense. Well done, well done. Um, so we're gonna sit back. We're just gonna do a really simple four count. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in. Well done, four, three, two, one, hold, one, two, three, four, and release, one, two, three, and four. If you've now enjoyed an amuse-bouche, <laughs> little appetizer, thank you for crushing. And uh, we've got a little promotional code for anyone who wants to do more. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Um, for the record, um, Janice offered her promotional code for free and I suggested that she charges something so that people that really wanted to do it paid something towards what she's trying to achieve. So blame me if you've got to pay anything. Mm -hmm. She was very generous. <laughs> Jan um, questions for Janice. We have about seven or eight minutes. I think she does a wonderful job. Joelle, Joelle go ahead. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Janice. It's interesting when you were talking about the crush, and uh, it, I think that we all have a tendency to think of crush, like crushing something and crushing a grape. But when we were talking about it, I was thinking about having a crush. When we have a crush on someone, we're much more open, we're much more forgiving, we're much more yielding, we're much more in our joy, we're much more in their joy. And so when I think about it, I think about having a crush on this, <laughs> right? Having a crush on the pieces of paper and not 
crushing the pieces of paper. Yeah. Yeah. But as it was unfolding, my idea that I the whole that word has a really strong connotation and it shifted for me. Right. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. I want to echo that. I'm jumping in really quick because Joelle, I love that. You just reframed it for me and that crushing all these things or having a crush on them is really loving our own vulnerability and our what we perceive as our weaknesses. And that's a beautiful thing. I just want to like take that little person and, you know, and love it through it. So, and at some point they were serving us, right? Yeah. And so how do you, how, do you, how are we gracious to those things that were serving us? We thank them. And instead, what we try and do is push it away and dominate it and fight it as opposed to just being like, you know, like, thank you. At this point in my life, you kept me safe. I don't need you anymore. I might need you another time. Hang out, but you know, not right now. Yeah. Janice, are you finding that, uh, are you finding people that are coming around to this content right now that weren't there before? And the reason I ask that question is, I'm an entrepreneur CEO type. I hang out with other types like that. And I was on a call today with other types like that who are literally talking about a mental health day versus a vacation day, renaming it, talking about like, wait, we got a balance now. Our people are working seven days a week. They're Zooming seven days. They're, they're not even like, there's no Monday through Friday. Like, I'm just curious what you're seeing out there in the world. Um, very much so. So um, I, the, the one hour crash and actually um, the reason um, I was interested in um, supporting you all was that um, I am trying to figure out um, how to get in little bits, right? Because we all have this bizarre relationship to time, right? And so what I've been reframing for the clients that I work with and the companies that I work with is mental breaks are actually work. So we have this perception that that's not work. And so what I've been doing is reframing it so that businesses and leaders understand that brain science tells us sitting in front in an intense situation while inbound is constantly coming in is going to destroy the productivity any way you slice it. So what is a change state for a company? The change state for a company needs to be mental health to give the workers enough ability to actually continue and be successful. Mm -hmm. So the change state for our business is what companies aren't kind of catching up to. And it, I, I am seeing more and more things, but I'm actually advising people to put mini breaks inside of their calendars yeah. because I'm horrified. I'm asking everyone to show me their calendar and they're literally scheduling meetings on Zoom back to back. Like, ah, don't do that. Yeah. Um, so the code. So the promo code is um, MEA Spring. So Janice, I heard another one today that was interesting, which was being really cautious around your foreign language speakers, having some anonymous chat going on, being conscious, you know, of how Zoom changes things, even how, how Zoom is creating an equal playing field among genders, no one at the top of the boardroom chair, we're all together. Jeff, of course, is our fearless leader, but he's not, a, yeah, he's sitting off in Cabo, but oh. like, it's just really fascinating. Thank you so much. I just really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. No, Thank you from really. Brooklyn. Thank you from New York City. <laughs> um, and Leslie, um, I, I don't have the sheet ready, but it's actually, I think I did upper lower bad things with the promo code. So if you can type yes, it. I just posted it on the chat. So okay. on your site, special promotion code is MEA spring and it's 50% off any video crush up until June 21st. Yeah. And we're actually, I'm putting out a couple more packages. So we're actually thinking about packing up um, a one hour that is weekly for three weeks. So you can just keep coming back and just letting off little bits of steam once a week. Um, and, and it's really, um, gosh, we need this. So yes. Tell me your um, website again. I'm sorry. We just want to get, is it? Um, it's crush and flow. One word. Flow.com. Yeah. Okay. I'm just putting that in the chat too. 
yeah. so that everybody knows where to get that. Thank so. you. Yeah. This was amazing. Oh, thank amazing. you. That was, wow. Talk about a sprint. I mean, we did a lot in such a little bit of time, but it was so valuable. I want to thank you. I think the reality is um, we think it takes a long time. You all did this. I didn't do anything. All I gave you was a playbook. Um, so really, this is what's most important. And we call, we say not everyone can be a guru, but we believe um, with the right tools, anyone can be a guru. So you all just proved it. A I think that's a fabulous, a fabulous point to end. Um, we were going to do breakout groups. I have a hunch, actually, that we might do better just to, to call it quits here, guys. Um, if, if anyone has a different feeling about that at the end of this, write me an email. Let me know how, how it would work, how it could have worked better for you. Um, we, we had a really nice chat with Bob, who is here, I see, Bob Waxman last week, who sort of suggested that we push the, um, the, uh, the dyads and the, the group discussions to the back end of these hours. This particular one to me doesn't feel like we need it, but in the future, that's the format. We're gonna run our hour and then have a 15 minute discussion at the back end, mostly because we were losing people during the course of the calls, okay? So um, we'll keep you posted and uh, we'll see you hopefully next week. Thank you so much, everyone.